Hello everyone and welcome to this video tutorial on how to customize the DSpace 7 user interface. My name is Jeremiah Kellogg. I'm the systems librarian at Eastern Oregon University and I like to make content about open source software and systems that are relevant to libraries. So my goal today is to give a comprehensive overview of how to go about customizing DSpace 7. Uh, this should work for 7.2 through 7.5. 7.6 isn't out yet, so um, that remains to be seen whether this will be relevant with that or not. My suspicion is it probably will be, so hopefully this video re will remain relevant for a while. Um, it was pretty difficult to pull together simply because there was a bit of a learning curve there for me. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go along. So what we're going to do is walk step by step through all of the documentation that's provided to us in the DSpace documentation. So with that, we should get started. For those of you who have seen some of my previous videos, uh, particularly the one on how to build DSpace 7, this screen is going to look pretty familiar to you. So this is a desktop environment I built uh, and installed DSpace 7 on. I'm going to leave a link in the upper right corner for that particular video uh, so that you can build an environment that's exactly the same as what I'm using here. That's not completely necessary, but it will make things a little easier, particularly if you're not comfortable with command line and building these sorts of systems. I'm going to try to make this uh, as simple as possible to follow along with. That is a bit of a challenge uh, given the material, but uh, hopefully hopefully this will be really helpful in, in showing people how to go about making these customizations. So before I really get started, there are a couple things I want to do. Um, first of all, I'm going to make the size of this a little bit bigger, so, so it'll be easier to read. Um, let's see. That should be good. Okay. So as with any kind of development project, we want to make sure our system is as up to date, up to date as it possibly can be. Um, so I'm going to do that with um, opening a terminal here. I'm going to do sudo apt update, and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And so what this is doing is it's grabbing all of the updates from the apt repository, and, and Linux uses the um, repositories in order to download software and, and updates and that sort of thing. It makes things a little easier uh, going that route. And we can see here that we have 15 packages that can be upgraded. So I'm just going to sudo apt upgrade. So after we, we get the update, we have to make the upgrades. And I'm going to do dash y. What this will do is just at the prompt where it asks if we want to upgrade everything, rather than having to press y at that point for yes, I'm just going to append this with a dash y so that um, that prompt automatically is filled in with yes. And I, I think it's been a while since I've updated, so I'm going to pause while this finishes uh, the updates. Okay, now that my updates and upgrades are completed, I'm going to clear my screen. And the other thing I want to do is install Chromium. Um, I've we're going to be doing a bit of work that's going to require developer tools and uh, developer tools come with any browser it's just I prefer the Chrome developer tools and because I would really prefer to use open source as often as I possibly can rather than using Chrome I'm going to use the open source browser that it's based off of and that's called Chromium so in order to install that we're going to get it through the apt repository now with Debian systems, I've, I've found that there are a couple of commands that you need to run. Well, actually, just uh, there, there's one installation that you need to make before you actually install Chromium. Uh, it's the dependencies. I don't know if this is necessary for Ubuntu or for any other flavor of Linux, but uh, with Debian 11, I'm finding it's necessary to first install the Chromium common package. So we're going to do that with sudo. Now, sudo is for super user do so that means my user can use sudo because um, it was assigned to that user but it gives me administrative privileges it gives me all the root privileges that are necessary to make installations on the system and manage things and and all that good stuff so sudo apt install chromium dash common and I'll hit enter and Y for yes, 
And now we can go ahead and install Chromium itself now that we have the Chromium common package. So we'll do that with sudo apt install Chromium. Chromium. And that should do it. We'll hit enter and Y for yes. Okay, so now that I have Chromium installed, I'm going to minimize this window and I'm now going to open the Chromium browser. Uh, so I'm using the LXDE desktop, that's what we see here, and depending on what desktop environment you're using, it's, it's going to show up in, in various places. Uh, in this case, it's under uh, this little home menu here, and then Internet and Chromium web browser. Okay, so one thing that I would like to do at this point uh, is to make absolutely certain that my history is cleared. Uh, so I'm going to go in this upper right hand corner, I'm going to go to settings and on this page I want to go to privacy and security and let's see I'm, I'm gonna try to make this a little bit bigger uh, so under privacy and security I'm gonna go here to clear browsing data I want to set this to all time so the time range uh, since the beginning of this particular operating system being installed uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit clear data there's not really much there but I'm going to clear data and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all of my work using an incognito window so in the upper right corner again you want to click on that and new incognito window all right let's see if I can make that a little bigger all right so what I'm going to do at this point is go to the dspace 7 documentation for customizing the user interface and I don't know that URL off the top of my head, so I am simply going to search for DSpace Customize UI. And so one of the top three hits here is the user interface configuration. That's not exactly what I'm after, but it'll get me there. So I'm just going to click on that. And let's see. So uh, in this left column here, you'll see that there is a link for user interface customization. I'm going to click on that. And so what we're going to do is go through all of the documentation on this page. Just about everything that's covered here we're going to touch on and um, I'm going to try to explain how it works and how it's used and so on and so forth. So the very first section of this documentation is an overview on Angular and they're telling us that the DSpace user interface is using on the angular.io framework and you don't need to be an expert in angular you don't even have to really know it at all but it's helpful to understand how it works so I'm gonna to touch on a little bit of the basics here I'm certainly not an expert in this I, I've used angular JS in the past um, it was kinda of clunky standard angular is based on TypeScript rather than JavaScript. I had to learn a little bit about this as I was creating the video um, just so that I could explain things better but it's not really necessary for people to have a full grasp of what Angular does. The important thing to know though is that when you're using Angular you're building your website with various components. So for example just looking at this page the very top here the header if this was built with Angular, this would be a component, so it would be a header component. Component, and then there's you know this content area, so maybe there's a content component, and then you have this navigation menu in the left column here, that could also be a component. So each part of the website is built upon different components. Now each of these components will have its own directory, and within that directory, you're going to find well, there's four different files. Well, three, four. I think there's there's four different files, but the three that you need to be aware of are the uh, component.ts, which is just the file that kind of dictates what HTML is going to be used and what CSS is going to be used, all based on Angular components. There is the HTML file, which has all of the HTML for that specific component. So in this body here, you know, maybe this would all be based on the HTML that's within that component.html file. And then you have the component.scss file, 
um, which kind of deals with SAS variables. If you're not familiar with SAS, it is kind of a more advanced version of CSS. You can actually use uh, nesting and uh, functions and that sort of thing to, to build your CSS. It's not completely necessary to understand what SAS is. Um, I don't fully understand it myself, um, yet I was still able to make the customizations that are outlined in this documentation. So they also give a link if you want to learn more about Angular concepts. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, you can just click on this, this link here. We're not going to go into more detail on that. Okay, so the next section talks about the theme technologies. So this is what the DSpace UI is built with. It uses Bootstrap, which is a website framework. It just makes building your HTML pages a little bit easier. Uh, SAS, again, this is uh, the CSS preprocessor. This is how your CSS style sheets are built. Not necessary to know it in, in great detail. Uh, and HTML5, which is the latest specification of HTML. So they're saying that the familiar, familiarity with these technologies is all you need to do basic theming of the DSpace UI, and that's pretty accurate. Um, you definitely should know some HTML, and you should definitely know some CSS. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with either of those, you'll probably want to learn a bit before you try customizing DSpace. Okay, so this next section here is about running the UI in developer mode. Now that's how we're going to go about doing things. So um, I think at this point that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to open up my terminal down here and I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Now some people might need to shut down the production version uh, that they have installed on their machine. If you built your instance of DSpace watching my previous video on how to do that, I had set things up in that so that DSpace would start automatically. We need to make sure that it is not currently running while we do our development. Um, because if we try to start the development environment while it's running, we're going to get an error because it's trying to connect to the 4000 port from two different instances of DSpace. And that just causes problems. So in that video, I had put the start script, which is a .json file, uh, in my home directory. So if you followed along with that video, this is going to work. If you didn't, and if you did things differently, you just need to make sure that, well, I'm going to use the ls command to list the contents of my home directory here. And you'll see that there's this dspace.ui.json file. So wherever you put this file is where you're going to need to run this command, whatever directory that lives in. So for me, that's in the home directory. Uh, but for other, others, it, it could be in this DSpace front end directory. There's a good chance it could be in there. Um, so if it's not here in your home directory, I would check here in the DSpace front end and um, make sure that you have this file here. So in order to make sure we stop this instance, we're going to need to run this command, pm2 stop DSpace and I just hit the tab button to autocomplete the dspace dash and then if I type in U and tab again that's going to complete everything for me and if I hit enter that should stop everything so now that I know everything is stopped I'm going to go ahead and start up the development environment to do that we need to change directories into this front end directory here so we'll do that with the change directory command which is cd so cd dspace and tab and then f and then tab again and I can auto complete everything and hit enter and this is the root directory of the dspace front end the user interface so when I'm in the root directory this is where I can run the command to start the development environment we'll do that with um, yarn start colon dev and I'm going to hit enter. Now this takes a little while to start up. Um, so in the meantime, maybe we'll just hop back over to our instructions here. Uh, so the reason why we're using the de developer mode is because the UI will start more rapidly. It kind of separates out different files between your uh, production and your test environment where it's necessary. And the big reason is the UI will automatically re reload anytime you modify a file. So every one of the edits that we're making here today, well, just about every one of the edits that we're making here, 
requires us to rebuild the UI and we're going to do that at the very end. So rather than rebuilding the UI after we make every change, which takes far too long, uh, we're going to be using the developer mode where we're going to rebuild things quickly in that development environment. It's not going to rebuild in production. Uh, essentially what we're going to need to do is make our edits in the developer mode. We'll stop the developer mode and then we'll go into the production environment and rebuild things in order for the things to take. And you'll see that at the end of the video. We're going to go over that. Okay, so let's jump back over to our terminal. Um, we'll see that it's still doing its thing. So what I'm going to do is pause the video while this completes. It takes, it could take up to five minutes for this to, to build. So if it seems to be taking longer than you would like, uh, don't worry. It's, it's likely going to... Um, complete in a few minutes, three to five minutes. So we're almost done compiling. You'll see that there is a compiled successfully message here, but then there's also this generating browser application bundles. We're not completely done yet. So it's compiled successfully, but they need to generate the browser application bundles. Uh, so while that's running, I'm just going to pause again. And we'll get back to it when it's finished. Okay, so now we get our compiled successfully message. If you have a little block cursor beneath that, uh, you can be assured that everything has compiled successfully and we're ready to look at things. So we're going to hop back over to the browser and we've completed our starting of the developer mode. We're going to come down here. So the next section is talking about creating a custom theme. We're not actually going to create a new theme. We're going to edit an existing theme, and that'll be the DSpace theme. And this was installed, I can't remember if it was by default, but it was definitely what I chose in the video where I show how to build DSpace. I think we could have also have chosen custom theme, uh, which is a little bit more robust, but a little bit more difficult to manage. DSpace theme is much more streamlined. So they do talk about what a theme directory should look like. So there are a number of directories and files within the root directory of your theme. There's going to be the app directory, and this contains all of the components that were built using Angular. And I'm going to talk about, you're going to learn much more about this as we go along, but just to give a, a heads up, an overview of what we're looking at here, the app directory is going to have all of your Angular components. Assets is going to contain things like, well, we're going to use it mostly for images, but you could also use it for fonts, which I tried and it, it didn't work so well. But there's a couple other things that can be put in there too, and, and we'll kind of get to that. Uh, styles, which contains all of your uh, CSS stylization. And there's also two .ts files within this directory. Uh, one is the eager-theme.module.ts file. The other is the lazy-theme.module.ts file. We're going to talk about these a little bit later. Right now I'm not sure I can explain it without actually showing examples, so we're going to get to that later as, as we're talking about customizations within the UI. Okay, so this getting started section, they're telling us that we need to choose a theme to start from. As I had mentioned, the DSpace theme is what we're using in this video. Uh, you can use others. We are not building this theme from scratch. I would consider that a more advanced tutorial, and this is more basic. So we're not going to get into how to create a new theme. We're going to just customize an existing theme. Um, and we're using the DSpace theme. And they're telling us here it's a simple example theme for novice users. Disadvantages that it mentions here, it has very few component directories by default, but you can always add more. That's something that we're going to cover further in this video. So if that's something that you want to do, you're certainly going to learn how to do that. Okay, so then the step two here, they, they're telling us to create your own theme folder or edit the existing theme folder. Again, we're going to edit the existing theme folder folder and not create a new one. Uh, so that makes the rest of these steps unnecessary. We don't need to register our theme folder because we're using an existing one. Uh, same with all of these next steps. It's all about how to enable your theme um, and make sure that it runs pop properly within the DSpace environment. So at this point, we can jump into our customizations. And the very first one that they're going to show us how to do in the documentation um, is how to customize the style and font colors. Um, well, 
your style, your font, uh, your background colors, that sort of thing. Now when we do these sorts of customizations, and this is specific to uh, kind of CSS global variables and not specific theme variables, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but, uh, but for global variables uh, there are four documents and actually three are really the only ones that we need to look at in order to do these customizations. I'm going to show examples of each but before we do that I just want to give a quick overview of what we're looking at here. So this very first one is the theme underscore sass underscore variable underscore overrides dot s css. So this is how we override bootstrap default sass variables. Because we're using bootstrap, whenever we want to make a global change, more often than not, it's going to be within the bootstrap variables. And they're telling us here that we can get a list of what those variables are under this directory here. So maybe it would be a good idea to just minimize this window. I'm going to minimize this window too. We don't want to close it because if we close this terminal, our development environment is going to shut down. We don't want that. Um, this is also kind of handy to watch to see how the recompilation is, is going when we add a new value to any variable. Um, so I'm going to come here, I'm going to click on that and open a new terminal. Open that up a bit. And so they were telling us here that uh, the nodes, modules, bootstrap, um, this is the file that we need to look at in order to get the list of variables. So I'm going to go into that directory. Now they didn't specifically say this, but that was essentially starting from the root of DSpace's user interface. And that directory in our terminal um, is going to be, well if we run the, the ls command uh, to list the contents of this directory, you'll see the, the DSpace front end. This is the root directory. So if we change directories with cd and DSpace front end, this is the root directory. And if I do the list command here, you'll see a directory for node modules. We'll cd into that. We'll list the contents there. Well, that's a lot. Um, but we need to go into Bootstrap. So we're going to cd into Bootstrap, list the contents, and then under this scss our directory is where we're going to find the file that we're after. So we'll cd into scss ls to list the contents and the file that they told us we could find the list of variables in is in this variables.scss file. Let's just make sure that is it. Yep, variables.scss and don't forget the underscore in front of it. So what we can do here is I don't actually want to make edits to this right now so what I'm going to do is use the less command to view the contents of this file. So we'll just do that with less underscore variables dot scss. Hit enter. Now when you see a dollar sign in front of characters or a word that means that it is a variable. We're defining a variable in this case. Um, and as we scroll through you'll see that there are tons and tons and tons and tons of variables. This is where we're going to come to make any kind of global customizations or to get the variable. We're actually not going to make the edit directly in this file. We're going to do it in the override file, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more um, in just a second here. Uh, but we don't need to be in this file right now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Q, the Q button to quit. And we're going to go back to the instructions. And what they're telling us here is that when we want to override anything that appears in that variables.scss file, we need to go into our themes directory and go into the styles directory there. So in this case, uh, the file that we need to override all of the bootstrap variables with is called underscore theme underscore sass underscore variable underscore overrides. Um, and to get there, what we need to do is I'm just going to, well I'm going to clear my screen here and to get there I'm going to do I'm just going to type in CD and enter that's going to bring me back to my home directory 
and from here I'm going to cd d space front end source themes d space and I'll hit enter. So this is the root directory of the d space theme and if I list the contents here as I had mentioned earlier there are three directories and a couple of files that kind of manage everything within this theme. So app is where we get our angular components, assets is things like images. Um, these files kind of manage things and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. And styles is where we're going to find all of the styling for our DSpace theme. So I'm going to change directories into styles and I'm going to ls to list the contents and enter. And so we have uh, four files in here. We're not going to look at this theme.scss file. Um, it's unnecessary. I think it manages things. I've actually never even looked at it, so I'm not 100% sure what's in there. Um, but in any case, the three files that we were looking at in our instructions, uh, one of which, the one that we were just looking at, is this uh, theme underscore sass variable overrides document. Now when we want to make global customizations of the bootstrap variables, uh, this is where we're going to do that. And I'm going to show examples of this in a little bit. Okay, so the other file that we're going to look at is the theme CSS variable overrides. And that overrides the variables that you're going to find in this file path here. So from the root directory of the front end directory. Um, you go to source, styles, custom variables. Now we're going to look at that a little bit later when I show you an example. But it's important to note that any time that you are customizing a bootstrap variable, the prefix, more often than not, is going to be this dash dash bs dash. And that is for this sass variable override document here. And any time we encounter this dash dash ds dash prefix in a variable, that means it's referring to the CSS variable overrides. And this DS spans, stands for DSpace. So these variables are specific to the DSpace theme. Or pardon me, just DSpace in general. And I'm going to show you an example of that. Again, we're just doing this quick overview um, to kind of get our feet wet. Uh, because this is a lot to take in and I think it's a good idea to have an understanding of what we're about to get into. Okay, so Finally, this global-styles file overrides all of the global styles that you're going to find in the source styles directory and then the um, global-styles.scss file. They are talking here about how uh, styles can be changed much quicker and more simply by updating one of these two files. Um, which really is the case for the most part, although I'm still going to show you an example of uh, what to do if you can't find the variable in either of these files. You can use this global styles file in order to do that, and I'll, I'll show you an example of that. Okay, so um, with that, we can now open up a browser tab and go to our DSpace homepage, and in my case, I'm using localhost. Um, which is what I used in the video that explains how to build DSpace. So if we go to localhost colon 4000, we get our home page, and we're going to get this message quite a bit throughout this, um, but we'll just keep clicking decline. We're doing some customizations and playing around with things. I don't think it's important for them to get our information on that. Now one thing you may notice when you open up the development environment is maybe you're not going to get your communities listed here. Um, these kind of go directly to the DSpace API page and, and pull a lot of this stuff for us. This is not how it's going to look in production. When we go back into production we're going to see our own communities and um, our own submissions. So no need to worry there. Really what we're just after is changing the look and feel, not so much the content of the system itself. Okay, so now we're going to, I'm going to show an example of customizing a bootstrap variable. Um, and being a global variable, it's going to take from page to page. So no matter where we go, within DSpace it's going to it's going to change. Uh, so in my case, let's see, I'm just going to go back here. 
Maybe I want to change the background color of the body. So um, all of the body here, I, I want that to be a different a different color. But I'm not fully sure um, how to go about doing that. So I'm going to use my developer tools to get some clues on how to go about customizing this. So if you right click on the screen and if you go ahead and click on inspect, and what I'm going to do is um, just highlight the body itself. So I'm just going to scroll up here. Uh, let's see, BS Themes homepage. So I think this one here, I'm going to go ahead and click on, on that. Maybe I can make that a little bit bigger. I don't want the header. I want this, this main content here. So I'm going to, I'm going to click on that and make that a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to scroll through here. And so the body is what I wanted to change, and we'll see the CSS definition for that here. And so we see that there is a background color, and this is a hexadecimal value, and this particular hex value is for the color white. Normally what I do when I find these sorts of things is I'll uncheck it and see if it changes anything, um, but you'll see in this case it doesn't. So what I want to do is actually add another color here rather than white to make sure this is actually the CSS I want to target. So what I'm going to do is go to um, the W3Schools color picker. Uh, W3Schools, whoops, color picker. Okay, and um, right at the very top we have this HTML color picker. I'm going to click on that. And so from here, I can just grab some hex values that, that I want to use. Um, and so maybe I want the background to be kind of a, a goldish color. Uh, maybe a little bit more gold there. Um, I'm just going to go with this color. It doesn't really matter what I go after here. Um, yeah, I'll just grab this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this color. I'm going to come back over to my developer tools and under the background color here I'm going to recheck that and in this box I'm going to paste that hex value. So now I've got this kind of ugly goldish color throughout the entire body and it doesn't matter where I go it's always going to be the background's always going going to be this gold color. And I'm picking this gold color more to make a point. I'm not looking to make an aesthetically pleasing website right now. Our goal here is more just to show you how to customize things. And I want to make it as drastic as possible to really drive home this is what we're changing. So under normal circumstances, this is not a color I would pick. But um, for demonstration purposes, I think this works well. I'm going to go back to the home page here by clicking on the DSpace button here. So now that I know that uh, the body CSS is where I want to make my background color change, what I can do is go back to my terminal. And what I'm going to do is um, CD to change directories. So I go back to my home directory. It'll just be easier to get to where we need to go by doing this. And I'm going to change directory into DSpace front end and then um, it was node modules for the bootstrap variables that we're looking at. Um, then bootstrap and let's see, I forget where we go from there. LS. Oh, so we go into the SCSS directory. CD SCSS. I'll list the contents there. And if you remember, uh, this variables.scss file is what we're after. And I think what I'm going to do is use the less command to look at this because I don't actually want to make the changes in here. I just want to find what the variable name is. So what I'm going to do is less space underscore variables.scss. Hit enter. So from here, what I want to do is search the entire document for the word body, and hopefully that will give me some clues as to what the variable is I need to change the, to change the body color. So to search when you're using less, you just want to use, you want to press the forward slash button, and you'll see down here that there's now this forward slash and then the block cursor. This means we can now type in our search term, and I'm going to search for uh, body, 
and I'll just hit enter. And so the very first hit we get is settings for the body element and that makes sense to me. So what we can do here is it looks like this body-bg is what the variable is called and it is currently set to white. I'm not sure if the default declaration is necessary or not but I'm just going to assume it is. So what I need to do from here is copy this entire line and now I can exit from less and I do that with the Q button. And now what we can do is go into our theme and change the bootstrap override file from there. So quickest and easiest way is just to do CD, we'll get into our home directory. Now I want to do, well I'm going to clear. So I'm going to CD into D space front end and then source SRC and then themes and then D space and we'll just go there. I'm going to list the contents. Whoops, hit caps lock. Um, list the contents. Uh, styles directory is where we want to go. So CD into styles. We'll list the contents there. Here are our three major files that we need to be looking at. But in this case, we want the SAS variable overrides document because that's where we're going to override uh, bootstrap variables. Because I want to actually make an edit here, I'm going to use the nanotext editor. So I'll type nano underscore theme and then sas variable overrides dot scss. Enter. Okay, so these are all of the bootstrap variables that are currently being overridden by our dspace theme. And if I scroll down a bit, uh, we'll see here this, this body color variable. Frankly, I don't know exactly what this does here, um, this particular variable, but the one that we just copied is slightly different, and I guess I'm going to put it just above this body color variable. So I'm going to right click and paste, and you'll see that we currently have the body-bg color set to white, and we're using the bootstrap variable called white. Um, we could actually take that variable out and CSS would just read it as, as white, but, um, but really what I want to do is use a hex value to change this color the same way that we did uh, when we used the color picker. And so we have a couple of options here. I'm going to have to recopy this, I guess. So I'll just run over to the color picker. I'm going to copy my color. Come back here, and actually, I'm going to refresh this page just so I can show that um, the color will change within DSpace and not our developer tools. We'll just close that for now. Open this up, so we're back into our SAS variable overrides file. I'm going to delete everything through the dollar sign, and we'll just paste our hex value here. And now, if I do Control S to save. I'm going to open up the browser here. I'm also going to open up the terminal to show that um, it is now generating the, the browser application bundle. So this is what happens when we're using the development environment. It's quicker than it would be to build things in production, but it's still kind of slow. So it's, it's not super quick. It should take less than a minute. Uh, normally it takes about uh, 10 to 20 seconds. Huh, well, you know, I don't know why that didn't take. Kind of had this happen before when um, just starting my customizations, and last time the answer was to just simply close the browser and restart everything, um, which is a pain. Uh, I, it may be because I'm using a virtual machine, uh, but this is a little wonky sometimes using the, the dev environment. In any case, I'm going to, I'm going to close this out. Um, it was some kind of caching issue, I'm quite certain. And so I'm going to go back here uh, to my privacy settings, uh, that window that I had opened um, to clear the cache. So I'm going to go to clear browsing data. I'm going to do all time. I'm going to clear data. And now I'm going to open a new incognito window. And we'll go back to localhost, localhost uh, 4000. And it should work this time, because we did everything. Yeah, it, it's going to work now. 
I don't know why that's the case, but if you do make some edits and you discover that it doesn't change, just open a new browser window. It shouldn't happen very often. And I do want to point out too that when you start your production environment, you may have to restart your entire server for these changes to take. I don't know if that's because I'm using a virtual machine to run all of this stuff or if it's just kind of wonky to begin with, but um, regardless, either restarting the browser or restarting the server more often than not should fix this kind of problem. Okay, so we've changed the background color here, and what I'd like to do is open up the documentation once again. So uh, D space UI customization, and just do a search for that. Oh, okay, that didn't give me what I wanted. Uh, what is it? Customize DSpace user interface. Okay, so that search is kind of going to get me to where I want to go. So under this user interface configuration, I'm just going to hit click on that. And then I'm going to have to come back here to user interface customization. Okay, so now we have we have the windows open that we had open before, except for the color picker, but that's okay. And so now what we're going to do is scroll back down to our instructions here. So we have just changed a variable within the theme SAS variable overrides. Uh, we had to restart the browser in order to make them change. Um, I don't think that's going to be the case for the rest of this video. At least I hope not. That would be awful. Um, and, and maybe things worked out okay for, for all of you. But like I said, this is a little bit quirky. And I think it might be because I'm using a virtual machine. Okay, so now that we've done a global change to one of the bootstrap variables, we're going to use one of the dspace variables to change something else. So we're, we're on to part B here. And in this case, well, let's go back to our page here. Let's say, for example, I want to change the color of the header up here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and right click within the header so I can go to inspect and get my developer tools. And what I'd like to do is just kind of keep moving up until I get things completely highlighted in that section. And the further up I go, the better off I'll be, I think. OK, so this uh, DS themed header navbar, let's see, we can probably DS themed header navbar wrapper seems to be a good place to look for what I'm after. And I'll bring that up a little bit. And so we'll see that um, the body is currently set to the color that, that we want. Let's, uh, let's just sc scroll through here. Really what I'm looking for is something in regard to the header. So one of the things we can do is we can change the, the logo height here. Um, so you can see we make it bigger and smaller. Um, but that's not actually what we're after. We want to change the background there. So looks like we're kind of in the right place. I'm just going to scroll a little bit more. And I see here this dash dash DS header dash BG. Now, as I look, really what I look for more than anything is the color to see what variables might be affecting that. So if I take out that DS header dash BG color, um, I get my background color, which is to be expected. But let's say that I want this to be a different color from what it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do is reclick that just so that it stays white for now. And I'm going to go back to the W3 schools color picker. Color picker. OK. And we'll just go here. And let's say that maybe I want want it to be kind of yellowish. Um, maybe not too yellow. Let's go with this one. So what I'm going to do is copy this hexadecimal value. And we will go to our DSpace homepage again. So we have our developer tools open. And what I'm going to do is just change the color here and see if that's that's what I want. Um, good enough. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that again. We're not looking for aesthetics here. I just want to demonstrate 
how to go about changing these things. Okay, so one thing that we can do is we actually get, in this case, where we get the variable name. We get the uh, ds-header-bg variable name. And just to prove that this is the, what exists there, let's, uh, let's copy this, copy that, and we'll go back to our terminal. And to get out of the SAS variable override, remember this is for bootstrap, not for our um, dspace variables. I'm going to do control X to exit out of there. And we're going to come back here, but first I just want to show that, that this variable exists in the base theme variables. So we can change directories. Let's do dot dot to go back um, to, to the dspace directory. And then dot dot again to go back to to themes and then dot dot to source and that should get us where we want to go so in this case I did the dot dot that means leave styles go back to dspace dot dot leave dspace go back to themes dot dot leave themes go back to source now I'm gonna list the contents here and we are after styles uh, so these, these are the base theme styles we'll CD into that directory list the contents and <clears throat> the custom variables file is the one that's going to have the list of all of the DS variables dspace variables let's look at that I'm gonna use less in this case then underscore custom variables dot SCSS hit enter okay so this one is not nearly as big as the um, dspace one it's it's only I don't know 50 lines or so it's not so bad and you'll see that the ds header dash bg which is which is what we copied from our developer tools right here ds dash header dash bg and then we have a ds dash header dash bg so you'll see it's currently set to the d space or to the variable uh, white and I guess probably what what this is referencing is just the hexadecimal value um, in any case we don't want to make the edit here because this is the base theme and what will happen is when we do a system update this file is going to be replaced so all of our changes are going to uh, to go away and we don't want that to happen so this is why we want to override in the theme rather than edit the base themes variables okay so to get out of less we'll, we'll hit the Q button Let's uh, cd and then dot dot to go back to source. And then from here, I can do themes, dspace, and let's see, I think it was styles. Yep. And enter. I'll list the contents. So again, this is the, the theme underscore variable overrides is the, the one we want. Um, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen. I'm going to use nano. Oh geez, I've already forgotten the name of everything. LS, okay, theme. So we want uh, nano underscore theme dot CSS variable overrides. We'll hit enter. And what I'm going to do is, you'll see that, you know, if we wanted to change the size of the header logo, we can do that right here. Um, I don't think that's necessary in my case, but it may be for other people. So what I'm going to do is paste that variable that I took out of my developer tools, and I'm going to assign a new value to it. And let's see here, I'm going to, if I can just come in here, I'll just copy this hex value directly here. Just copy. Okay. And I'm going to close that, and I'm going to refresh this just so that we can see the changes take. All right, so let's go back to our terminal, and we are in the CSS variable overrides file. I'm going to paste my hex value there. It looks like I didn't copy the full thing. We do need the pound sign there. And then we also need to make sure we use a semicolon. And now if I do control S to save, and then we'll uh, open up our browser, and I'm going to open up this terminal that is going to show us where we're at with the browser build. Okay, so it was compiled successfully, and you'll see this time we don't have to restart our incognito window, which is great. 
Um, I think that last time it was just some weird caching issue. I don't know if it has anything to do with this being a virtual machine or whatever. Uh, but in any case, if your color does not take here, um, try restarting. It is unlikely that that will be the case, but, but just in case, um, you should know that, that if you close everything out and restart your browser, it should take. Okay, now let's go back to the documentation on how to customize things. So at this point, we have looked at how to override the SAS variables, which are basically your bootstrap variables. Um, it's just a matter of going in to either use your developer tools to hunt down what you're trying to change, or you could go into, from the root directory, the nodes, modules, bootstrap, scss, and then the, the variables.css. You could just search that file to see if maybe you can find uh, whatever variable you're after. And then we also just looked at how to change uh, the ds variables, the dspace variables, um, using this css variable overrides. Now let's say that uh, we can't find what we're looking for in either of these files. If that's the case, we can then use this global styles dot or yeah global styles dot css file to to make some changes so i'm going to show you how to do that right now we'll go back to our dspace homepage, and let's say for example that we want to have a greater amount of space after this list um, after any of our uh, lists let's say that we want a greater amount of space there so to do that, um, I'm not sure what search terms I would use in the DS or the bootstrap variable files that we just looked at. So what we can use is the, the global styles. And in order to figure out what the name of the element is that we're looking to change, we're going to need to use our developer tools again. So I'm actually going to hover right over this first item within the list and right click on that and inspect to get our developer tools. And so really what I want to do is I want this entire unordered list to have a greater amount of space at the bottom there. So it's not just a list item that we want to change. It's the unordered list tag. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that in my developer tools. And we'll see that the CSS properties that have been given to an ordered list and an unordered list and a, I forget what the DL stands for some kind of list. We'll see that uh, there are a couple of CSS declarations here for those. Now it looks like this margin bottom is probably a good option here in order to make our changes. So I'm going to test that theory by clicking in this one rem box here. I'm going to take out one. I'm going to put in four just to make it severe enough so that we can see the difference. And so this does indeed work for us if we put in this uh, for rem uh, makes the padding or makes the margin much bigger. So with that in mind, really all I need to do here is just copy all of this directive, the CSS directive here. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to copy. And now I'm going to go back to my terminal that I've been using to edit things. And we're currently in the CSS variable overrides. So we want to get out of there. We'll do control X to do that and LS to list the contents. And it's this global styles.scss file that we're after. I'm going to use nano to edit this. So nano underscore global styles.css. I'll hit enter. And we could search through this to see what overrides are actually happening. And it's not a very long list in the dspace theme which is nice. And so what I'm going to do is uh, we'll just make a little space for ourselves. And you'll see that we have this at import directive, uh, which imports all the base styles. So remember, you know, when we were looking at the CSS variables, we went from, you know, dspace front end to source to, yeah, I forget how to get there now. But in any case, um, it's importing all of those global styles from the base theme. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is paste the CSS that I copied out of my developer tools and we have it set to 4 rem right now. Before I make before I save those changes, I just want to come here, I'm going to exit out of my developer tools. I'm going to re 
refresh this page so that we see that it is back to normal. And this is only for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to come back here to my global styles file and I'm going to do control S to save and we'll open up the browser once again and I'm going to open up this terminal that shows where we're at with the compilation. Actually, I'm going to move this down a little so that we can see that things have changed drastically and it's not with our developer tools that that's happening. So it's pretty easy to, to go about doing that sort of thing. So anytime you have an element within your DSpace interface that you want to change and you're not sure how to do it with um, the SAS variable override or the CSS variable override, you can do it here in the global overrides. Okay, let's go back to the instructions and see what's next. Um, so we've, we've done all of this. Uh, we've overridden bootstrap variables, CSS variables, or DS variables. Uh, global styles, we've looked at all that. And so now we're kind of at this modifying the font. I'm going to just make that a little bigger. Modify uh, the default font. This is going to be a callback to our bootstrap variables uh, that we had over, overridden. So the, the body background color, when we did that, we did so in the, let's see, let's control X out of global styles. We did that in the theme SAS variable overrides. And so the instructions tell us now that that is the same place that we're going to go and change our fonts. So we have two options. There's actually three options. And I'm going to talk about uh, that other option that's, that's not here, but it's not the best way to do it. I think it's just more for demonstration purposes. Before I do that, I just want to point out that I did try this if your font requires installing local files. You can do so with, with the following. I tried this. I couldn't get it to work. Um, I was using um, TTF files rather than these WOFF files. Maybe that's what was causing the problem. I'm not 100% sure. But what I do know is I couldn't get it to work. So we're not going to cover that. And that's okay because it is unlikely that you won't be able to find what you need on Google Fonts. So we're going to take that method, that approach, as opposed to doing this one. So the very first thing I want to do is just demonstrate how this is done. And so we're going to go back to the theme SAS variable overrides. And if you remember, that's how we changed the background color here was through those SAS overrides. And we can do that. Well, here, let's just go. Let's. I'm going to open up my terminal that I've been doing my edits with. And I'm going to use my nano text editor and underscore theme uh, SAS variable overrides. I'm going to hit enter and you'll see right at the very top here we have our uh, font family. So this is just an array of the various fonts that you cycle through um, until you hit one that the client side is going to be able to recognize. Now because that we're using this Nunito um, Google font. It doesn't matter whether or not the client side or the user's interface or the user's computer has this installed as a font because we're taking it from the Google API. So they're going to be able to see that particular font even if it doesn't, even if it's not actually installed on their computer. So what I'm going to do is just demonstrate that here is, let's say for example, um, I have a font on my machine that is called Free Mono. So I'm just going to, and it's drastically different from what's there. Um, so I just want to show how this works. Now to add that font, I'm going to do a single quote and then free mono, all one word. We'll close that single quote. We'll put in a comma. I'm just going to put a space there. I don't think you need to, but I'm going to anyhow. And I'm going to do control S to save. We'll come back to our DSpace homepage. And so this font should change open up this terminal to see where we're at with the build. And now you'll see that the font has drastically changed, um, which is what we wanted. Now, the thing is, when a user goes to this page, and if they don't have free mono installed on their machine, 
it's not going to show up here. It's going to go to the Nunito um, font that we had, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It's a odd word. But what I'm going to do is show you what to do when you want to install a new font using Google Fonts. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go to this Color Picker tab and I'm going to do a new search for Google Fonts. Google Fonts. And we'll come here. And so they're going to have quite a bit of what you're after. Uh, most, most of the things that you want are probably going to be here. I'm really partial to the Ubuntu font. I really like that one quite a bit. So let's go ahead and try to install that one onto our DSpace user interface. And we'll do that with this box here that says Search Fonts. You just want to click in that right next to the little magnifying glass. And I'm just going to type in Ubuntu. And I get three different options here. Um, so we have the, the mono version, the condensed version. I just want regular Ubuntu. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Close that out. Okay, and so from here we have all of these different options. I think we can install them all simply by coming to the View Selected Families in this upper right corner. Oh, I didn't choose any, so okay, I guess not. So I guess what I'm going to do is I want my default font to be, well, this regular 400 looks pretty good. I'm going to click on this little plus button next to it, and apparently that's not going to do anything. Huh, that's odd. I guess I need to have this view selected families clicked on first, so we'll, we'll do that. And now I'll just click on this plus. Okay, that worked. So we're not embedding this into the header of the HTML document. We're using SAS, and, and what we need to do is actually click on this um, at import radio button here. So I'm going to click on that, and then that's going to give us our import directive. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to copy all of this because it's it's got this style stuff here and, and we don't want that. Really what we want is everything from at import. We'll copy that and you know I wonder if I can yeah let's let's make that bigger so that you can see what's going on here. So what I want to do is copy everything from at import all the way to this semicolon. I'll right click on that and we'll copy. And let's go back to our DSpace homepage. And I'm going to go into my terminal. And so within this theme SAS variable overrides document, I'm going to go back to the beginning. Oh, actually, just under this at import directive here where it's getting the Nuninto font, I'm going to paste that directive that I just copied from Google Fonts. So we'll just paste that and that all looks good. And so we know what to type here because of the family name. So here family equals Nunito. Um, so we just use Nunito to put into the array. Same case with Ubuntu. The family is Ubuntu. So we're just going to type in Ubuntu here. And um, let's see, we'll do a couple of single quotes. I'm going to do a comma, and then I'm just going to come here and type in Ubuntu. Now, if I do Control S, that will save. I'm going to open up my browser. We're going to come here and open this terminal so that we can watch things get compiled. And now we have the DSpace font on our machine on the server so that it will display as, as Ubuntu on the client side machine, on your user's machine. Okay, so that's pretty easy, changing fonts. Let's go back to our customization documentation. And so we've gone through this process here, so the option of adding um, the statement and modifying the font family. Uh, as I said, this option B here just did not work for me, so I'm not going to get into that. And let's see, the last thing that they have here is modifying the default color scheme. So you can use entirely bootstrap variables to adjust the color themes. Now remember, we did that. Um, we adjusted the color themes for uh, the bootstrap background color here using the SAS overrides file. So come back here. They tell us again the list of bootstrap color variables can be found in that spot that we looked at just a little bit earlier. 
And then additional examples can be found in the out of box D space theme, which adjusts the bootstrap default bootstrap color slightly for both accessibility and to match the D space logo. Okay, so um, those those are all the custom themes, the D space custom CSS variables that we saw in the um, CSS overrides document. That's when we changed the header up here. Okay, so we're not going to do any more demonstrations on that. We've already done it. So we can move on to customizing the logo in the header. So the first thing I'm going to need to do with that is um, get a logo. Hopefully you have one on your machine. I'm just, I, need, I don't have one on this one. So I'm, I'm just going to grab uh, the logo from our website, the Eastern Oregon University website. And I just put this in the URL to make sure it's there because I'm going to use the wget command in order to actually pull this from the web. So I'm going to go to my terminal. We can now do control X to get out of the SAS variable overrides file. Let's see. Actually, let's let's look at the instructions again. And the very first thing they're telling us to do is to copy your logo to your themes assets images folder anything in this theme folder will be deployed as assets theme name images URL or URL path so this is important to know and I'm gonna point this out again and why it's important but for now let's just download our logo into the assets images folder so it's it's for the theme itself not for the base theme I'm gonna open up my terminal again we are pretty much in the theme I'm just gonna do CD dot dot just to go back one directory to the dspace themes root directory and we'll just ls the contents list the contents and so in the instructions it told us our themes assets directory is where we need to place our image so I'm going to CD into assets list the contents so you'll see here we have fonts and images um, I'm just going to change directories into images I'll list the contents there's some stuff in there uh, we have a directory for favicons. We're going to get into that a little bit later. But for now, what I need to do is pull in my logo into this directory. Um, I'm going to use the wget command. And let's see, wget, we'll paste that URL that I copied earlier into here. And I'm just going to hit enter. And so now there should be a an EOU logo ping file saved here. So I'm just going to clear and list the contents of this images directory and you'll see that we now have the EOU ping file. Um, I'm going to copy its name because I know I'm going to need it a little bit later. We'll copy that and we'll look at our instructions again. We have copied our logo into the assets images folder. Now we need to edit the themes app header header component TS file and they're telling us we need to um, make some edits to that to, to make the overrides actually take. So let's go back to the terminal and let's see I'll do cd dot dot forward slash dot dot so we're gonna go back to assets then to dspace I'm gonna list the contents of this directory and we have this app directory so the last of the directories we haven't looked at this one yet so, you know, styles are where the overrides happen. Assets is where we keep things like images. And then the app directory is where our Angular components live. So, let's CD into that. List the contents. Oh, geez, I went to the home directory by accident. Okay, so CD, dspace, front end, src for source, themes, dspace, app okay now I'm going to list the contents and each one of these directories is a is an angular component so we have we have a header component we have a header nav wrapper component we're not going to look at that one um, we have this home page and we have this nav bar so each of these are components um, so for example here's the header component Here's the home page component. The nav bar is actually in here as well, and I'm going to talk about that in just a little bit. But in any case, just know that you know you have your header component 
and your home page component um, and those are built with Angular. I'm going to open up my terminal once again and let's see the instructions. Let's, let's actually look at the instructions. Okay, so the first thing they're telling us is uh, swap the template URL property that your theme is using, the local copy of the header.component HTML file. They're telling us we need to edit the header component, which is kind of true, but not fully true, and you'll see why in a little bit. I'm going to change directories into the header directory, list the contents there. What we need to do is edit this header.component.ts file according to the instructions. Um, and we can do that with nano and header.component.ts. This is what we have currently. And if we look at the instructions, that's essentially what they were telling us we needed to have. It's just they're saying that we need to comment out the template that goes to the base theme header component and then add and then uncomment this header.component.html. They kept the same for the style there. I'm not quite sure why. But in any case, you'll see that the template URL header.component.html already exists here. So we have header.component.html. So this TS file is basically telling the system whether or not it should be grabbing from the themes header component HTML file or whether it's grabbing from the base header component HTML file. And it makes a lot more sense to make these edits within the theme itself because again, when you update DSpace, all of those files that are found in the base theme are going to be overridden and all of your changes are going to go away. So, so you want to do this within your themes header component.ts file and, and just point to, to your themes actual HTML and SCSS files. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of that by doing control X. We, we did that. Let's go back to our instructions. Okay, so we just looked at number three here. Your themes version of the header.html was will be empty by default. That's not actually true. So what we need to do is modify your copy of the header component.html. Let's open up our terminal. Let's do nano header.component.html. Now remember the instructions said that this is empty by default. They're wrong. And I think it's because we're using the DSpace theme. I'm not 100% sure. Or maybe it's just talking about building a theme from scratch, because in that case, it probably will be empty. In any case, what I want to do is that image file that I copied the name of a little while ago, I'm going to paste that in here. And I'm going to go back and delete the regular one there and just paste in, paste in mine. Oh, what did I do here? Let's see. It's, there we go. And this file path, I think, is wrong. So what I need to do is make sure it's changed to the proper file path. So let's go back to the instructions. And remember when I had mentioned that this was an important thing to know? This is, this is why. We need to make sure that this path is within that HTML file. And really all it is, it's just a matter of adding the theme name in between assets and images. So that's what we're going to do. We'll come back to the terminal here. So between assets and images, we are using the DSpace theme. So that is the name we're going to use. And then forward slash. OK. Now if I do Control X, or actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do Control S to save. And we'll come back to our browser and our DSpace homepage. And this should be changing. And actually it won't. And I'll explain why. But um, let's see. Let's open this up and watch it compile. So you'll see that the logo did not change and there is a good reason for that and I just wanted to demonstrate this um, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that what we just did is actually I mean, it's not super important, but it does kind of come into play for when um, users log into the system. I'm going to explain that right now and how to actually make this uh, turn into your own logo. So if we go back to the instructions, we've done all of this. And under normal circumstances, you would think that it would have worked. But the important thing to point out here is number seven, this note. If you have a theme based on DSpace, be aware that theme that that theme places the header logo in two locations. So 
we just placed that logo in one location. Now we're going to do it for the second one. And they explain that this allows the DSpace theme to support a single line header, whereas the custom themes header is multi-line. The header component, as described above, is only used in user profile pages when you're using the DSpace theme. So right now, if we were to go to a user profile, which we're not going to because I don't think you can log in with the development environment, but if you went to a user profile, then your logo would show up here. So if you want this to show up in, user, in the user profile, then you're going to need to make the edits that we just made. Let's go back to the instructions. And so what they're telling us is the navbar component is actually where this is going to happen with the with the user interface when people aren't logged in. So we need to use the navbar component following the instructions they gave us for the header component. And you know it would have been nice to mention that a little bit further up here so that we don't go through all of this and then find out oh geez it didn't show up. Really it's just a matter of reading through the instructions further to discover oh well I'm using the DSpace theme so I need to actually edit the navbar component. So let's do that. Let's go back to our terminal. I'm gonna press control X to get out of here. I'm gonna do CD and then dot dot to go back one and then ls to list the contents and you'll see that there is a navbar component so let's cd into the navbar list the components just like we did with the header component we need to make sure that this ts file is pointing to the right places so let's do nano navbar.component.ts enter okay we don't need to edit anything out here or comment anything out we have uh, it's pointing to the proper place. Uh, it's telling the system that the component.scss file that you should be using lives in this nav directory. And you can kind of tell that with this uh, one dot and a forward slash. That means the directory that this ts file lives in. So it's just pointing to the, the files that are within the nav component directory. So we're good here. We can do control x to get out of there. I'm just going to clear the screen. And now we can um, nano, oh, I already forget the name, ls, navbar. So we can do nano navbar.html. And so we just need to change some things in here. So remember, we needed to put in the theme name between assets and images, so d space. And then here, this SVG file, we just want to delete that and then paste our name there. I looks like I had a space so it was doing some weird stuff when I pasted. Alright, so now when I do control S, let's go to our home page and now it should change to our logo. Just open this so we can watch. Okay, so now we have our logo installed here. And of course, if you remember, we could change the size of that if we really wanted to. Um, you could do Control X to get out of here. And if we do uh, CD back one, two directories, and then into styles. And let's see, I'll hit enter. List the contents there. I think it's in the theme CSS variable overrides. Um, that's where we changed the header color, so it makes sense it would be there. We do nano theme CSS overrides, enter, and you'll see that um, we currently have, have it set to 40. We could put it to 50. Control S to save, and we'll come back to our home page. We'll watch as it compiles and this should be a little bit bigger once everything gets done compiling. Okay so you see that it is now a little bit bigger um, and so that is how we would go about adding our own header or our own logo and making it a little bit bigger. Okay jumping back over to the documentation um, before we get to customize footer, I just want to show how we can go about further customizing the header. So what they're saying here, obviously you can also make additional modifications to the HTML 
and the header in this file. So where we had just put that image, that new logo, where we made those edits, that's where we edit all of our HTML within the header. So let's do that. Let's do an example of that. And I'm going to go to the home page here. Let's say, for example, we want our organization's name right next to the logo. We can do that pretty easily. Um, I'm going to go back to my terminal where I'm making my edits. I'm going to get out of this CSS variable overrides by doing control X. And now I can change directories back one. And then let's go back into the app directory where all of our Angular components live. We'll do enter and ls. Now remember, because we're using the dspace theme, we don't want to edit this header component. We want to edit the navbar component. This is where the major changes are going to take place for that. So let's cd back into navbar. We'll list the contents here, and we see our standard component files listed once again. Editing the header or the navbar we can do so within the HTML file. So if I do nano navbar.component.html, I'll be able to make the edits I want to do here. Of course, in order to do this, it really does take some familiarity with HTML. So if you're not familiar with HTML, unfortunately, there's, there's not an easier way of doing this. So uh, my recommendation would be just learn some basic HTML. But in any case, uh, like I had mentioned, we want to add the name of our organization right next to the logo right here. And we can do that with some simple HTML. So um, this A tag here is where that, or excuse me, the, the image tag here is, is where our logo lives. And we want to put our organization name right after that. So that's pretty easy to do. Um, I'm just right after this tag, I'm going to put in another div. And let's see, um, I'm just going to close out the div. And in between that, let's see, we want, um, I'm going to go with a header four tag, so an H4 tag. The lower the number with the header tags, the bigger it's going to display. So I don't want anything super large, but I want something larger than normal. So um, H4 seems like a good choice here. I'm going to do H4 and then um, I'm going to call it Eastern Oregon Oregon University Library. So the name of my organization. And then I'm going to close this H4 tag. So you do that with a forward slash H4. And that should do it, I think. So if I go ahead and do control S to save, open up my browser, uh, we should be seeing the Eastern Oregon University Library characters there pretty soon. Open this and watch it compile. Okay, and we do see it there. So anytime you want to edit, edit anything in the header component, it is that HTML file. And if you wanted to do any stylizing within um, the header, you would do that in, let's see, let's uh, control X to get out of the HTML file. Um, we would look here in the navbar.component.scss. So um, let's just have a quick look and see if there's anything in there right now. CSS. And there's a little bit going on there. And so as you can see, uh, if we wanted to change like the font color, for example, uh, we could do that here directly. It is taking from the variable ds header icon dot color, or we could just do this directly in this file itself. There's really not a reason not to change it, but uh, in the ds header variable, but um, just to show that this this will override it will override anything that's not within um, the navbar itself so this is specific to the header because we're just dealing with the header you know slash navbar component so let's say we wanted that to be black we could just do the black hex decimal which is three zero or three o's it's three zeros not three o's threes yeah i did that right Okay, so if I do Control S, and then we run back over here, 
all of this text should turn into, I guess, I don't know if the links will, but this should turn into black. And so it did. So just the regular text is going to turn into, uh, turn black. And again, I'm not doing, I'm not aiming for aesthetics here. This is all more just demonstration and education. This is how you change things. This is not how you make things look nice. I would take a much different approach here if it was about aesthetics. Okay, so that is how we customize the header. At this point, let's jump back to our documentation. And so we have customized the header. And now what we want to do is customize the footer. So in the instructions, it's telling us we need to decide whether we want to modify just the HTML or the CSS. This is going to work exactly the same way as it did with the header, or in our case, because we're using vSpace, the, the navbar component. We're going to do both, and they're telling us here that we need to make sure that we comment out the path to the base components footer, component.css, as well as the HTML component file. So we're going to do both. We've decided we want to do both, and we're going to make those changes. Let's, um, let's go back to our terminal, and we'll control X out of here. We'll do cd dot dot to go back one directory, and so the footer component should be here, and if we do ls, we'll see that it's not. So what we need to do is add the footer, which means we're going to jump ahead a little bit into the documentation here because we need to do that. Um, we can't do any of this work until we have added that footer component. So if we scroll down, that's quite a ways down, I guess. Customize other, no, nope. customize UI labels, no, nope. we'll get to that. Extending other themes, no. Okay, so here we are. Um, Further down the page is a section on adding component directories to your theme. So what they're saying is if you come across an Angular component which is not in your theme but want to customize it, you can add it into your theme directory. So that's what we're about to do. We're going to add the footer component into our themes directory. So they're saying uh, you can add copy over a component directory as follows. First copy the Angular component directory in question from the custom theme folder into your themes folder. That's pretty easy. Um, if we go to our terminal that we've been using to make edits, if I do cd back to dspace, back to themes, and ls to list the contents, you'll see that there is this custom theme that the instructions were telling us about copying stuff over from. So if I go uh, cd into custom, we'll list the contents here. So just like any other theme, it has the same directories. We have the app for our Angular components, assets for things like pictures and images and so on and then styles to deal with our CSS. It's exactly the same no matter what theme you're in, you're going to have each and every one of these directories and these two TS files. Now let's go into the app directory to see what components are in the custom theme. Uh, let's see, CD app, list the content. So we've got quite a bit more going on here. They have the nav bar like the dspace one does. They have the header like dspace one does, a header nav wrapper just like dspace. So what we're after here is the footer app. What I'm going to do is copy that into the dspace themes app directory. So we'll do that with the copy command and that is simply cp and then I'm going to do one dot and a forward slash meaning within this directory. So footer I'm just going to type fo o and tab to complete. And now that I think of it, we're going to need to do this recursively because we want everything from the footer directory copied over into the dspace app footer directory. So copy dash capital R for recursive, which just means that you're going to copy everything within this directory as well as the directory itself. And we're going to output that to our dspace themes app directory. So the easiest way to do that is to do dot dot to go back and forward slash and then dot dot to 
go back to the themes directory. So from here we can do D space and if I just type D and tab that will auto complete and we want to go into the app folder and that should do it. So we're going to copy this footer directory into the dspace app directory. I'm going to hit enter. Now if I do cd back back or dot dot slash dot dot to go back to the themes directory. So I'll just show that. Well, not, actually I don't need to. Uh, and then forward slash and dspace and then app and then ls to list the contents there and you see that we now have the footer directory here. We have a couple more steps to take here. So let's go back to our instructions. So we have copied all of the Angular component directory for the footer component into our own themes app directory. And they're telling us now we need to register that component in one of your themes module files. So this is where those two TS files I was talking about every component having. Uh, there's the lazy theme and then there's the eager theme. And for performance it's best to use as many component or put as many components into the lazy theme module as that means it'll only be downloaded if they're needed. Components in eager theme module are included in the initial JS download for the app. So you should only add components there that are necessary on every page. Now the footer is going to appear on every page, so it's a pretty good indication that we're going to need to use the eager theme.module.ts file. And they actually even go further to say that specifically, so um, such as the header or the footer. These should be added to the declarations array. You should also include components using one of our custom decorators. Well, that's all unnecessary. We don't need to go into that. It looks like what we need to do is we need to register these, these components. And we're going to do that in the eager theme.module.ts. So let's go back to our terminal. And we're going to do cd to go back one directory. And um, let's look at the contents there. So this is the file we're after to register our footer component. So we'll use the nano editor. So nano eager theme module.ts, enter. And the nice thing about the instructions is they're already using the footer. So I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to copy this line, the import footer component and so on. And just copy that. Come back here and I'm going to come on down just beneath the last import. I'm going to paste that directive. So if it was a different footer that we were using we would actually just call it whatever that components name is and then component. Okay so we've got that first part there importing that. Let's go back to our instructions and they're telling us we need this in that same module file we also need to add the imported component to the declaration second uh, section. So what we need to do is find this array for a constant declarations and I'm going to open up the terminal. Let's come down here. You'll see that the declarations array is here and then after this entry component, yeah, it's, uh, oops. after the entry components, just because I like to keep things in alphabetical order, I'm going to add um, footer component, which is, you know, right up here. Just actually could just copy this and paste it in here and don't forget the comma and so if I do control S we will now save this and our footer module is registered. Now if I go back to the user or to our dspace homepage I think we're probably going to get an error. Let's see. Uh, we already did have an error and that, that was actually um, because we hadn't registered dspace yet and we're using the dev env environment so it updated automatically. Um, but in any case registering the component will take away any kind of possibility of having the compilation fail. Okay so it is there now. If I scroll down here we'll see that it is using the base themes footer and so we want to go about changing that. I think if we go back to our instructions at this point you should be able to restart your UI. Okay we did that. Now you can customize your newly added component. Okay our newly added component is the footer so we can scroll on back up to where the footer 
customization instructions are. Okay, good. So let's go. So the very first thing that we should do, we've already decided we're going to um, edit both the HTML and SCSS. Let's go into our footer.components.ts file to make sure we have everything there that should be. I'm going to go back to my terminal. I'm going to do Control X to get out of that document into the out of the eager theme module document. We're going to do CD into app. We're going to ls to list the contents. You'll see that we have our footer here. I'll CD into footer. And I'm just going to clear my screen. And then I'm going to list the contents here. So just like with the nav bar, we have the same files associated with our component. Uh, we have the HTML, the SCSS, and the TS. First, we want to look at this TS file. We'll do nano footer component.ts. OK, and so we see here that we actually do need to uncomment and comment some things. So the very first is the style URL. We do want the footer.component.scss for this particular theme. And it already lives in the same directory as this footer.components.ts file, which we saw. Uh, so we don't need to have any path up to it. So we can just put the name of the file. Uh, so I uncomment that. Now I'm going to comment out this other one that's pointing towards the base theme SESS file. And that's just two forward slashes to make that happen. We're going to do the same with the template URL. We're going to uncomment that one. And then we're going to comment out the one that points to the base theme. So in your file, you want to make sure that anything with all of these kind of go back directory commands are commented out. We, we specifically want what the theme itself has in its SCSS file and the HTML file. OK, let's see. We can do Control X to get out of this. And that will ask us if we want to save. And so I can do Y for yes, and then Enter. And so if we come back to our browser, and we can watch it compile. And if we scroll down to the bottom, I can minimize that. We scroll down to the bottom and we'll see that the header is not there anymore. I mean the footer isn't there anymore. So that's because our HTML file within the footer app is empty. If we do nano footer component.html you'll see that we have nothing here. Now we have two options on how to go about putting content in here. We could create our own which is what we're going to end up doing or we could import from the base theme to get that footer component back at the bottom of the page. And that might not be a bad idea because it does use a lot of variables already and you don't have to create new ones or anything like that. So, um, so it may not be a bad idea, but in my case, I want something that's a little different, that's, that has a different layout than what that was. And so I'm not going to copy that over. I'm going to edit this file directly. Before I do that, though, I'm going to do Control X to get out of this file. And what I'm going to do is pull the base themes CSS into my themes CSS for the for the footer. And just to show quickly that um, there's nothing in the CSS file, I'm going to use less. You'll see there's nothing there. Do Q to get out of that. And what I'm going to do is copy over the CSS file from the base theme into my dspace theme. So that's that before I change the h or the html, I'm going to do this first. So, what I can do is use the copy command once again, and we're just do, doing one file so we don't have to do it recursively. So cp and then from my home folder, um, that's what this tilde is, my uh, Unix users home folder, which is where I have dspace installed. I'm going to do the tilde and a forward slash. That means from this user's home directory. And then if we do dspace and then front end and source, and I think it's styles. Is it styles? No, I think it's app. It's app. Sorry. Um, and then footer and then footer.component.app. SCSS. 
and I'm going to copy it into I'm already in the footer directory for my theme so I don't need to do anything other than one dot one period and one forward slash and it will copy this new it will copy the base themes SCSS file to my dspace themes SCSS file so hit enter and now if I press the up arrow a couple times to get to less footer dot component dot SCSS you'll see now that there's actually some content in there and we can we can edit this as as we please um, but we're not going to do that quite yet I'm going to do control X oh actually we're in less so I'm going to do Q to quit out of that and now what I'm going to do is edit the HTML file so let's fa say for example we want some social media links in our footer uh, we're going to go about doing that. Now, the Eastern Oregon University website already has a lot of the code that I want, so I'm simply going to go there and lift it. So I'm going to go to our uh, to our our website, and the footer down here. I want something that looks similar to this, so I'm just going to steal this from our page and. Um, I can do that by right clicking on the footer down here and inspect and the little ellipses here I can click on that and there is an option to copy and I want to copy the entire element so I'm going to select that now if I come back to my terminal and I'm going to use the nano editor to edit the HTML file so nano uh, footer.component.html and it's still still blank so what I'm gonna do is paste the code that I just lifted off my website into here and so this this will start us off uh, we're gonna make a lot more edits but if I do control s to save and then look at our dspace page quickly and watch it watch it as it compiles So we should, if we scroll down, I'll just minimize that. If we scroll down, you'll see that the header is back and it looks awful. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna clean this up a little bit, even though I, I said that I wasn't gonna do much with aesthetics. Um, this is just a good example of the approach to take. So the very first thing I think I want to do is I actually want our address to um, well, you know, actually I want this to be seen a lot easier. And so fixing that with some CSS is the best approach and that's what we're going to do so we want to go back to our terminal this is all saved I'm just gonna do control X to get out of there I'm gonna do nano footer dot component dot SCSS so that we can change the styling from that gray uh, and I'm gonna make it white so if I do enter and so you can see here that the background color is set to the dash dash DS or D space dash footer dash dash bg variable in this case I don't really want to do that instead I'm just gonna change things directly in here and I'm just gonna say white which is oops which is what this is something that CSS is going to be able to pick up on white is kind of a keyword there and it knows to assign it the white hexadecimal value so if I do control s to save so basically we're just doing some stylization right now we can go back let's go back to our dspace homepage and we can watch it compile and now that that's done if we scroll down to the bottom you'll see that this is now styled in such a way that um, the background color is white a little bit easier to see now let's say for example I want to move this address on top or have it appear before our social media stuff we can do that and in the um, in the EOU version of that you'll see that that's how it's laid out and that was because it was that's how the CSS worked with that in this case it's not it's it's different so let's go back we're gonna close out of this SCSS file with control X now we're gonna do nano Oops nano footer component HTML once again and what I'm gonna do is uh, make this div appear above our social media divs and actually before I do that what I would like to do is you'll see that this footer class here that is specific to the 
library's website, so we don't need that. I am going to keep the social icon class, and we're going to define this with CSS in a little bit, but for now, we're just going to keep it there. And then I want to copy and paste this stuff here so that it appears above the social icons div. With the nano text editor, you can actually copy and paste within the editor using its own tools rather than right clicking um, because you can't just copy and paste things easily here we're going to use the nano tools and what we can do is if we put our cursor at this very first div and um, right on the chevron there and if we do control shift and six that's going to set a mark and what that does is it's going to allow us to highlight everything we want. So if I press down the air, uh, the down arrow, it's going to highlight everything on top. And if I push the right arrow, it's going to cover everything in this line. So just keep hitting it until I get to the end. And now if I do Control K, that that will cut this text. So Control K, and take that out. And then I'm going to bring it up here, and actually I'm going to enter that just so we have some room. Okay, now to paste, I can do Control U. Why they chose Control K to cut and Control U to paste, I don't know. I think the U is uncut, maybe. I don't know what why they would call it K for cut, but in any case, that's what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and do control S to save this and we'll see where we're at. Go back to the DSpace homepage and watch it compile. Okay, once it's compiled we can just scroll down here and we will see that now the address appears above the social icons. But what I'd really like is for the address to be over here and the social icons to be over here. In addition to that, I also want to make sure that the social icons show up. We're going to have to do a little bit of work there. So first, let's actually put in the, the icons. And if we go to the instructions, line three here says, now based on what you want to modify, you will need to either update your theme's copy of footer.component or um, HTML or SCSS or both and then uh, to change the footer HTML okay we did all that modify the HTML or SAS as you see fit so this is what we're after here if you want to add images add them to your themes assets images folder just like we did with the logo so it's kind of the same deal we're just gonna do that again so what I'm going to do is uh, let's see I'm gonna come to the terminal I'm gonna close out of this with control X I'm gonna change back two directories so cd dot dot forward slash dot dot ls to list the contents so we want to go into assets cd assets and images and we'll just list the contents there so the instructions were saying this is where we want to put our images that go into the footer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my website here and what I'm going to do, I'm going to close the developer tools and I'm just going to grab my social media icons. So I'm going to copy image address, come back to the terminal. I'm going to use wget. So wget and then we'll paste the URL that we just copied and it should give us a facebook.ping. Hit enter. ls to list and we'll see the Facebook .png file is there. We're going to do the same for all of the other stuff. First I'm going to clear. Come back here. We'll get Twitter. Copy image address. Use wget. Paste the address here. Enter. Go back to the web page. We'll get YouTube. Copy image address. Go to the terminal. Use wget. Paste that in there. Okay, and last one, we will grab whatever this is. 
Let's, uh, what is that? I don't know what this is. I'll copy image address, come back to the terminal, wget, paste, Instagram. It's Instagram, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so enter. All right, I'm going to list the contents in this directory and just make sure I have everything. So I have Facebook, I have Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay, I'm in good shape here. Now, what I'm going to do is change directories back two directories back to our dspace root directory our dspace theme root directory we'll list the contents and let's see we're, we're, we want to go into the app directory because we're dealing with the footer component so cd app and cd footer list the contents okay um, I'm going to nano footer.component.html because we're gonna, going to edit the HTML at this point. And now we're going to change these href tags so that they are in the same place, at, or sorry, the image source tags so that um, we're pointing to the right files. I'm going to delete all of the things that are specific to the website, and I believe it was assets assets um, let's see I think it's dspace forward slash images yeah that should do it so I will I'm gonna copy copy this and so now I can just paste that in delete some of these out delete that old path Paste in the new. It looks like I copied more than I wanted. That's okay. Assets, D space, images. Yep. Okay, and then we'll come over to the next one. Now, let's see. Uh, we're going to backspace until we get to the double quotes. And paste in that. Okay, that's good. Do the same for Instagram. paste. All right, that should do it. If I do control S to save, now let's look at our dspace page. We'll watch it compile. And if we scroll down, we should have our social media icons and we do. That's great. All right. Now, this isn't exactly how I want it. So what I want to do is move our address over to the left side of the screen and move these social media icons over to the right. We're going to do that in the components scss file. So we'll head back to the terminal. We are currently in the HTML file, which is not what we want. I am going to take note of the fact that we have the social icon class here, so we're going to have to define that. I'm going to do control X to get out of here, and we'll do nano footer component scss. Okay, so in order to make things happen the way I want them to, if I go to this text align center, I'm just going to delete that because that is not what I want. And what we're going to do is add a display. And this is, whoops, this is going to make it appear the way I want it to. So they'll end up being side by side if we do a display flex and then a colon. And for the padding here, we could go and change the variable, um, just like we could have with this background color a little earlier, uh, but I don't want to jump through so many hoops at this point. Best practices, I'm not sure what the best way of doing it is. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I guess it depends on what your workflows are. I just want to do this quickly and easily, so I'm going to take out this padding here, and I am going to add, whoops, padding, oh jeez. Sorry, I'm hitting way too many buttons here. Padding. I'm going to do one rem. And so for now, I, let's let's go ahead and see what this looks like. If I do Control S to save, we'll hop on over to our DSpace page. And so when this gets done compiling, our address should show up over to the left, and our icons should show up to the right of that. 
I'll scroll down, and that is the case. Of course, we don't want these so close together, so what we need to do is define the social media. I think it was called social icon class. Now I forget. Um, let's go back here. I'm going to have to come back here in a second. If I do control X, and um, I'm just going to less footer component.html. See, I called it social icon. I'm just going to copy that. Press Q to quit. And now nano footer component.scss. And I'm just going to add this class. So I'm going to do it right at the top here. And if you do dot, and then I'm going to paste in the name there. So the dot means this is a class. You're declaring a class. And if we do a curly bracket and another curly bracket, whoops, and come up here. So I think what I'm going to do in order to make uh, those icons appear the way I want them to, I think first I'm going to give that div a width of 32%. And we'll do a semicolon. And then the next thing I want to do is do a text align. So text align colon. And we want it to go to the right because we want it to show up further on the right hand side of the screen, not directly right of the address. OK, so I'm going to do Control S. We'll come back over here. And so now when this gets done compiling, these should end up somewhere over here. We'll just watch it compile. I'll minimize this. We'll come over here. And so now the footer looks pretty, pretty good. And maybe one last thing that we'll do is put a little bit of space between all of those. I'm going to do that in this same file. And it was really an A tag is where those are all kind of being populated. So if I change the CSS for the A tag in this document, it is specific to the footer component. It's not going to change it system wide. It's only going to do it for this footer component. That's why it's called footer.component.scss. So it's safe to do this as long as we know that um, all images that use the A tag are going to follow this set of rules. So if I do um, A, and let's see, put another curly bracket, come up here, a couple spaces there. And we'll just do a padding uh, so that we get a little bit more space between the buttons. And we're going to do 0.5 rem. And don't forget the semicolon. Now control S to save. We'll come back here and watch things compile. And I'll minimize this. We'll scroll down here. And now we have more spacing between the icons themselves. OK, so that, that was a lot of work. I just kind of wanted to show the process of how we would go about customizing the HTML in a component, in this case, the footer, as well as the CSS, in this case, the footer. So now what we can do is come back to the documentation. And we've done all of the footer customizations. So now we're on to customizing the favicon for the site or theme. And what the favicon is, is um, you'll see in the tab here, there's this little icon. We can change that. We can make that into something that is a little more relevant to our own institution. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We'll come back to the documentation here. So. First, we're going to look at step one in the theme section of your config file. You need to point to the favicon you want to use. OK. In this case, everything is set up the way I want it to for the most part. So the way this works is if we're doing a different theme, we would have to create a full new definition here. So we'd have to have a new name, whatever that theme's name is. So in this case, it's dspace. And then we would have to have uh, tag names, attributes, that sort of thing. So really, I've discovered that with favicons, uh, apparently Chromium and Chrome tend to favor SVG files. Um, 
and I'm going to be using an ICO file. So what I want to do is actually take out this reference to the favicon.svg file. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to come back to our terminal. I'm going to control X out of here. And then let's see, I'm just going to do CD to get back to the home directory, my user's home directory. And we'll CD into D space dash front end. List the contents. I believe they said it was in the config directory. So we'll do CD config list the contents there. So this is what we're after, the config.prod.yaml. We're going to edit that with nano config.prod.yaml. Um, you don't want to do this in the other files because um, that's not what it's looking for. We need to make these edits here in the prod file. Okay. So there's 371 lines in here. I'm just going to look for themes. So if I do control W, I can do a search and I'm going to type in themes, enter. And this brings us to the theme config, which is exactly where we want to be. And I'm going to scroll down until the comments end. Okay, so we can use our nano tools to cut this out of the file. And the reason why I'm doing that is this SVG file, it, I find it kind of causes problems if I don't get rid of it and if I'm using an ICO file. So the favicon that we're going to use is going to be called favicon.ico. We haven't quite gotten there yet, but in any case, we, we want to delete this first. So control shift six, and that's the number six on your keyboard to set the mark and then the down button and a couple of times I'll hit the down button and then the right button to complete all of it. So we want to take everything out starting with the dash tag name all the way through the type SVG plus HTML so that we get rid of this favicon.svg entry. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Oops, not enter. Uh, control K and that'll cut it. And that should be all I need to do here. Yeah, that, that's all I need to do here. I can do control X to exit and then Y to save and enter. Let's go back to the instructions. So we took this out and as I said, it just it's going to make things easier. We don't really need to read those instructions there. Or do we? I see. Actually, what we need to do is we need to change the favicon file or at enter the favicon file that we want within our, our themes images favicon directory. So let's do that. Let's, uh, I'm going to open this up, open up the terminal there, um, clear this. And what I'm going to do is, I guess really what I need is my favicon. So I have, have that URL here. Let me copy that. So I just want to make sure that I actually have the right URL. I'm going to paste it in here. And enter. So there it is. Tiny little favicon. It's going to end up here in the tab. Come back to my, my terminal where I'm doing the edits. And if I do cd back one directory into source, into themes, into D space. Uh, let's see, assets. Um, let's just go there. Now, if I do ls to list, we'll see we want that images directory. So we're going to cd into images, ls again, and we have this favicons directory. So we're going to move into that next. cd favicons, list the contents. Now what I want to do is I don't want to use SVG files at all and because Chromium and Chrome tend to favor the SVG files I'm just going to get rid of them completely so I don't have to worry about them taking that out. Because um, really all I have available to me right now is a favicon. I don't have an SVG file. If you have an SVG file you know you don't have to worry about this so much. Um, so right now what I'm going to do is remove favicon.svg and I'm also going to remove the ICO file 
because I'm going to rename the one that I download here to favicon.ico because that's what we were pointing at in that um, config file. So I've removed both of those and if you have an SVG file it's good to remove both of these as well um, and just re rename whatever you download to favicon.svg in this directory. Um, so th that's what I'm about to do now uh, for an ICO file. I'm going to use wget to get the favicon that I have stored on the on our website. I'm going to go ahead and paste, hit enter. Okay, so we'll see that if I list the contents, it is called eou underscore favicon. That's going to cause problems, so I need to rename that. And you can rename a file in Linux using the move command. I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Let's list things again. So I'm going to rename this eou favicon file and we'll use move which is mv and then uh, e capital E all I have to do is hit tab to autocomplete that and we're going to move it into the same directory so I'm going to do the dot forward slash and then just call it um, favic favicon.ico list the contents there it is and so now if I go back to our site and let's see is it recompiling no what do I need to do to make that recompile I guess we could just refresh and you'll see that it is now changed to the EOU favicon now I'm gonna just demonstrate this a little bit better if I go to the non incognito window that I have open I'm just gonna paste that in there and we can see it a little easier there okay I'm gonna delete that and just clear browsing data just to be safe and then go back to the incognito window and so that is how we change uh, the favicon so I suspect at this point people are probably thinking okay well the favicon has changed but can I change that dspace angular text there and make that more relevant to my institution and yeah you can what we'll do is we'll just run over here to the instructions once again we've just completed uh, customizing the favicon we're gonna get to home page news in a bit but first what we want to do is look at this custom UI labels using internet internationalization files and this is where we're going to be able to actually change that heading now there are a ton of different labels throughout the website um, and what we're about to look at is how we're going to go about changing those sorts of things so we're about to change this text here using the internationalization files let's go to our instructions again and so we can edit these files directly in the source assets i18n.json files or we could create a separate json file in our theme which only lists the keys that you have changed and this is probably the better way to go and again the reason for that is if we update dspace what's going to happen is when you upgrade it it's going to all of those files are going to be replaced the source assets the i18n all the json files in that directory are going to get changed so it's better to do this within the theme with that said we are first going to look into the base themes <clears throat> internationalization files so I'm going to do CD to go to the home directory and if we go uh, CD D space front end and let's see I think it's source and I'm going to list contents there yes this is what we're after this directory here so we're going to CD into assets list the contents there so you can see it's very similar to our themes assets directory um, it has images it has fonts but it also has this i18n directory and this is how they're able to internationalize dspace how you can use different languages which is kind of nice so what we're going to do is cd into the i18n directory and I'm going to ls to list the contents of this directory and there's a bunch of different languages that are available to us here I don't know what all of these are I suspect native speakers 
of other languages than English are probably going to have a better idea of, of what their specific file is going to be. But in my case, I'm using English, so I'm going to use this en.json.5 file. What I'm going to do is I don't actually want to make edits directly there, as I've already explained, so I'm going to use the less viewer. Less en.json.5. So there are, I think it's like 5,000 lines here that, that could be edited. Um, so what we need to do is actually find the label that we're after. And the way I do that is if I go back to my DSpace page and I see the DSpace Angular characters written out here, that's what I'm going to search for because that's what I want to change. So if I go back and we're in the less viewer so if we do forward slash we can search and if I search for dspace angular oops what did I what did I do forward slash d space angular I find these two entries right here um, there could be other places, and I could check that by pressing the N button for next. And so it it's, ends up being that these are the only two instances, because I after two times I get um, pattern not found. So I'm not exactly sure which, uh, which one of these to use, so I'm going to actually change them both. And I'm going to copy both of these. Control copy. And then I think, yeah, so I've copied those. I'm going to do Q to quit out of that. And I'm going to CD back one, two, and then themes, and then D space, and then assets. OK, we'll list the contents here. You'll see that we don't have the directory we need. So what I'm going to do is create that directory. And we'll do that with this command mkdir for make directory and we're going to call it i18n okay now let's cd into that i18n and if i ls you see that we don't have anything in here right now clear the screen what i need to do is create that new or create the same file that, that we just copied from. So and I forget what it's called. Let's let's go to our instructions here. Okay, so it's going to be en.json.5 or just five. Okay. All right. So you come in here. I can create that file using the nano editor. So I'm just going to do nano en.json5. And if I hit enter, that'll create the new document. And we need to have a couple of uh, curly brackets here, so opening and closing. And in between those, we're going to paste what we had copied from the original en JSON, dot, or JSON 5 file. So I'm going to paste that in there. And from here, I'm just going to edit this. And I'm going to call it EOU repository repository um, now these two colons here are just so that it separates the kind of breadcrumbs so you'll see here that there's a lit there's those two little colons uh, and then home I'm not sure if that can be removed or not I don't think it's really a big deal so um, you know keeping it in there is probably not a not a huge deal but when we edit things this, this is now going to read EOU or EOU repository or something like that whatever I just changed it to EOU repository yeah so um, I'm gonna do the same for this I'm not sure which one this actually affects um, but I'm gonna go ahead and paste whoops not paste Sorry, that was that was a little silly. All right, I'm gonna delete all that. So I'm gonna call this one EOU repository as well, and then the 
colon colon because I deleted that by accident. Okay, that should be good. So now I think there's some more steps, but I'm going to do Control X to get out of there and Y to save and enter. And let's look at the instructions again. So we're using the theme override approach here. And so we created our directory within the, at the themes assets directory. And so we only added the translation that we wanted to. And so at this point, what we need to do is we need to, in the terminal window, we need to change into the scripts directory and then execute this command. OK, so we need to find the scripts directory. I don't know where that is off the top of my head. I'm just going to cd to my user's home directory and cd into dspace front end. List the contents there. And we see the scripts directory right there, so that is likely where it's at. I'm going to cd into scripts list contents, which is kind of unnecessary because really at this point what we need to do is run the script. I'm just going to pop over to the instructions again and I'm gonna copy this so that I don't have to type it all out and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it now what we need to do is make sure that we have the right theme name in here so we'll, we'll delete what's there and then put in dspace and then if I hit enter that'll run the script and after a couple seconds it says that it is done and so now I believe if we just pop back over here and if we go to our dspace page and refresh it should change should change to EOU repository and so it did um, probably hard to see I, I, I don't think there's a way to make that bigger but in any case it, it has changed to EOU repository um, which is precisely what we were after so now, anytime you want to change a label, you would go to that same place where we found the labels initially, which, yeah, I think it was like source. I can't remember exactly where it was, but um, you, you would go in there and just find what you want to change. And then you would go into your themes assets i18n directory and then open that file that's in there and change what you want. OK, so now. Um, I, there's one more thing that we want to look at, and that is how to customize this section right here. We've already pretty much done this kind of work before, um, so it's it's kind of a little bit more of a review, but we're going to walk through it anyway, just so that um, we have good examples. So first thing we're going to do is jump over to the documentation. We're going to uh, scroll back up to customize homepage news. So um, same deal with any component. This is, this is a component. Um, it's going to have all of the same kinds of files associated with it. We're going to have to take the same steps as we did with um, the footer and the navbar components. Uh, so we'll we'll start there. Let's um, let's we'll come back here. I'm going to clear this screen, and I'm going to cd. I'm going to go back one directory into source, and let's see what what was it themes and dspace, and it's components. So it's in the app directory, and we will ls to list the contents, and so it's this home page directory is what we're after. I'm going to cd into that list the contents and you'll see that there's this home news component. I'm um, just going to look real quick at my dspace homepage and this right here is the home news section. Okay so we first thing we want to do is take a look at that .ts file and make sure it's pointing to the right place. Let's see cd home news List content, so you'll see that it has the same three files that every component has. Now let's edit the ts file. So nano home dot ts. Okay, that all looks good because it's not going back to the base theme directories. We're, we're seeing that it's pointing directly to the CSS and the HTML file that lives in the same directory as this component dot ts file. Okay, we're good there. Let's do control X to get out of there. And so any HTML that we want to edit is going to be done in this component.html, just like the footer and the nav bar. And any styles that we want to change are going to be in this scss file. 
So first, let's take a look at the HTML file. And I'm going to use nano again. Nano home news .component .html. And the thing that really jumps out at me immediately is how do we take out the DSpace 7 header that we have displayed prominently within our news area. So right here. And this is going to work for everything. We can remove all of this content. We can add whatever we want. You just need to have a somewhat basic understanding of HTML. So I'm going to come in here and this header one tag is where the dspace7 header is so I'm gonna delete that and just we'll say welcome to EOU library archives something along those lines if I do control s to save and then we'll pop over to our home page and we'll watch it compile you'll see that that header has changed now and so after that, you know, you can put in whatever content you want. I'll come over here. You'll see that um, all of the text here is what is going to be displayed in that area. So we don't need to go ahead and do that. Uh, but just know that that is something that you can do. I think probably what would be helpful for people is another thing would be to how do we change this background here? Uh, to something that's a little bit more relevant to our own institution. So I'm going to show you how to do that. First I need to get an image um, and I'm just going to use this tab here that I used for my favicon to get the image and I'm going to paste the URL. So this is uh, for our website. Actually I think it's from the EOU website. Yeah so I found this on the EOU website. It kind of has the right size to it and, and all that so I just grabbed the URL so that I could use it as an example. So I know this URL is going to the image I want it to and just like with all of the other components we need to put our image into the assets directory of our theme. So what I'm going to do first is control X to get out of there. I'm going to CD back one, two, three directories. So we are in our DSpace root directory, or DSpace theme root directory. And assets is in here, so I'm going to CD into that. And images, list the content, so all of our images are there. I'm going to use the same process as I did with these PNG files for our social media as well as our logo. I'm going to use wget and then paste the URL to bring it in here. Go ahead and hit enter. All right, now I'm going to list contents and here is the name of that new image that I have loaded in here and I want to copy that name. Now that I've done that, I'm going to CD back two directories and then back into app and what was it? Home page and home news. And now that we're there, I'm going to edit the HTML file once again. So uh, nano homepage.component.html. And what I'm going to do is look for the place where it's pointing to the image. And so that's this right here and it's already the right path so it's the assets dspace images and I don't want the banner I want what I just downloaded so paste that that all looks good now I don't know if you need to do this or not but I'm going to anyhow um, I'm gonna delete these two lines where it says source and I can just do control shift uh, six, the number six on the keyboard, and go down and then go all the way to the end of this line. Control K to cut it. And so, what those were doing was, uh, I think it was kind of a responsive design sort of approach, and I think it was different sizes for the image. I'm not 100% sure, but I don't want any DSpace logo showing up, so I'm taking that out just to be safe. Okay, now that I've edited the HTML file, I can do Control S to save. We'll jump back over to our DSpace homepage, and when this compiles, we should 
see that image there that we had just added. And sure enough, we do. We do see those there. Okay, so with the, the white text on this very, very colored background, and there's a lot of darks and then there's a lot of lights, it, this may not be the best image to use for a banner, but that's okay. I'm not going for aesthetics here. But we do want just one last example of, of changing the style to this. So, you know, maybe for example, we want a color that pops out a little bit more um, on this background. And we can do that. Let's go back to our terminal that we've been using to edit. I'm going to do Control X to get out of that. And I'm going to clear this. Now I'm going to use the nano editor to go into the .scss file. And so what we can do here is change the color of the text. I mean, there's so many things that we can do. And, you know, you need to know how to use CSS to, to make more advanced changes. Um, but just, just one last demonstration of, of how this works. This color declaration here is currently set to white. And if we wanted something that, that pops just a little bit more, we could do cyan. It's going to look ridiculous, but it will prove the point. Uh, I'm going to go back over to page here and we'll watch it compile. And so this should turn to cyan once it gets done compiling. And it does. And so there it is. And actually, I, white might have worked a little bit better. In any case, uh, that is how you would go about doing that. I mean, we could also make the, the font larger too. So maybe we want that font a little bit bigger. Maybe that'll help make it a little easier to read. So I'm just going to go back to my editing terminal here. And within this image container, I think this would actually work. We could just, uh, under this position relative, we could do the font size property. And, um, you know, let's make it really big. Let's make it mm, 30 pixels. And if I go ahead and control S to save, and open this back up and we'll watch it compile then all of these characters should be much larger than they are now it won't affect this because this is an h1 tag but everything else it does and wow that is way too big way too big um, but you can see it now that's for sure okay so i think that that covers um that covers just about everything in the customization documentation that DSpace provides for us. Let's see, let's do a quick recap. Starting from the beginning, the um, DSpace is built on Angular components, and each one of those components, as we saw, has a .ts file, a .html file, and a .scss file. This is where we go to make edits directly to components. Technologies that are used are Bootstrap, which has some variables that comes with it that we can use. Uh, SAS, uh, which Bootstrap uses to compile CSS. And um, HTML5, which is the latest specification of HTML. We know how to run things in developer mode. Um, we know that every theme has three particular directories. Um, app for Angular components, assets for things like images and our language files, um, our .ts files that kind of help register the various modules or components that we're using. Uh, we looked at DSpace as our theme or started with DSpace as our theme and built off of that. We were able to make global style customization, so that includes fonts and colors. Whenever we're looking at global variables uh, using Bootstrap, we're going to use the SAS variable override document. Whenever we're looking at variables that use the uh, DSpace variables, we're going to use the CS variable override CSS file. And anything else that we're not quite sure where that variable lives, we could just do in the global styles.scss. We modify the font using the um, SAS override variables. We've gone over how to install new fonts. We talked about customizing the logo and the header. So we went into the headers component directories and we edited everything there that needed to be 
edited in order to show our our logo. We customized the footer. We also customized the header and both the header and footer work exactly the same way except we just had to add the footer component so we went over how to go about doing that. We added a favicon to the site as well as the name of our um, institution into the into the tab of the browser. We customized the home page news uh, following the same instructions we would for things like footer and header and nav. We, we've customized components in our theme. We didn't really look at others, uh, but we did kind of look at how to add new ones. So, you know, playing around with those, it works exactly the same way. You always edit HTML within the component.html file. You always edit styles within the, the component.scss file. We used UI labels that use the internationalization standards. We did that using the theme override approach. Um, we didn't talk about extending to other themes. That's kind of a little more advanced and um, not, not worth it for this video. Adding component directories to your theme. So we went through the process of adding the footer component to our DSpace theme. Removing a component is the same, only in reverse for uh, adding a, a component. And that pretty much covers it. Now, before I go, I just want to point out that when you are done using the dev environment, you're going to need to shut it down. So I'm going to do Control, Control X to get out of here, and then CD, so I go to my user's home directory, and then uh, at this point I'm going to CD into well, actually you know what we could do we don't have to even worry about that let's um, let's open up the terminal that has our dev environment running if we just close it it'll be done so if I come back over here and refresh we're gonna get a page not found so what we should do though is we do need to make sure that things are compiled in the production version of our site. So we need to start the production module um, and we can do that making sure that we're in the directory that has this dspace.ui or dash ui.json file in order to start things up. So I'm going to do sudo, no we don't have to do sudo, I'm going to do pm2 start dspace.json or dspaceui.json so everything has started there. Now if I come back here and refresh you're going to see that our changes have not taken. So you can see here everything we did has not shown up yet but you will see that it's actually my own I have my own communities uh, I have my test community there recent submissions so we're no longer uh, pulling in information from the uh, DSpace 7 API. Now in order to get our theme to take we need to or our changes to take we need to come back and I'm actually going to stop the production hit enter and what I need to do is I need to CD into the dspace front end directory and now what I need to do is run this yarn command yarn build prod I'm going to hit enter and this is going to take a few minutes to do its thing uh, so I'm just going to pause and come back when it is done. Okay so after a few minutes my production environment has been rebuilt and now we need to restart dspace. Uh, I'm going to go back into my home directory where my um, dspace-ui.json file lives. Let's clear that. Um, and just run my pm2 start dspace-ui.json and enter. Now, when I refresh, theoretically, every sh everything should uh, all those changes we made should should take. And um, as we can see from the header, they didn't all take, but most of them did. Really what we're missing here is the uh, background color and the header color. And I'm not sure what happens here. I think something gets cached within the system and, and it's kind of weird. 
but if the system is restarted so I'm going to restart my my server now and uh, and we're going to come back here I'm going to first close that out uh, and close this out okay and I'm going to restart my system with this command sudo restart or is it reboot I can't remember it might be reboot reboot now Okay, so I've restarted my um, server, and what I'm going to do is open up a terminal. I am going to restart dspace, so I'm just going to use the pm2 start dspace ui.json command. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to open up a Chromium browser. And we don't need to worry about incognito because we're pretty much done with everything. So I'm just going to go to localhost 4000 and fingers crossed our new color scheme should be applied. And it is. So um, so just restarting the server is, is, is a good idea if, if you're not getting the, the colors that you've changed. Uh, so we have that kind of weird yellow up here and then we've got this ugly gold down here orange gold and everything else seems to be there so um, I think we did it I think we got through all of the dspace documentation and we covered uh, everything just about everything they had there so that was an awful lot of content and I hope uh, folks found it useful should people have questions you're more than welcome to reply in the comments or email me. I don't always have time to answer questions um, and sometimes it might be on be beyond my my skill level or knowledge base but whenever I can I will always try to help so you know certainly feel free to to reach out if if that's something you would like to do and so I want to thank everyone for watching and hopefully I'll I will see you in future videos thanks